Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Sumit, and I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. Before I begin with today's video, if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. So the topic for today's video is that, how do we integrate Salesforce with Google in order to perform the translation, Google translation integration in Salesforce using LWC components. So, all right, let's jump into today's video. And uh, before I'll show you the implementation and the uh, development of this uh, content, let me show you the final output, what I'm looking for. So my business requirement is this. As you can see, I added a Google translator here. And in this Google Translator, it will help me to translate the source text, which I'm going to add here in the target language. So you can see the source language here is English. And here I just type in, hello, how are you? So I type in, in English, and I would like to translate this into Hindi. So when I click Translate, it will call the Google Translate API, which has been designed by using Zapid API. And after the translation, it will uh, that uh, that API will revert the output that result and that that result will be displayed. Let me translate into a different language. Let's say Italian. It's say Ciao from side. And just to validate whether the translation is correct or not, what I have done, I open a Google Translate in a new in a separate window, and you can see here for Hello, how are you? It is this. And if I just translate into Hindi, it looks. Yeah, or it's similar to that, depends. So that means the translation is working perfectly fine, but now how we have implemented this translation in LWC company. So let me switch to my Visual Studio Code window. So to know more about LWC components, LWC introduction, how do we design and uh, create a LWC component and how do we deploy a LWC component, you can visit my previous videos. There I have explained the implementations and the de development and deployment of LWC components. As you can see, this is my Apex class, the, the controller class. And in this controller class, I've set the endpoint as Google Translate one dot rapid api.com. Now, how do we get this endpoint? How do we get this API keys? So in order to do this, I will be going to take help of Rapid API. And for this, what I've done, I, uh, first of all, uh, there's a Rapid API, uh, there's a Rapid API service provider. I use this Rapid API. And in this Rapid API, we'll, you will find out the Google Translate. And uh, once you have, uh, the very first step you have to do is, you have to subscribe for this. If you will be doing this very first time, you have to subscribe this. And here, when you scroll down, you will see there's an option called endpoints. You have to click on endpoints. And in endpoints, on the left side, you can see we have post detect, get language, and post translate. Because I require the API endpoints and the API keys, so therefore, I'll just select post translate for testing purpose. And when I select post translate, in the middle portion, we can specify the the details we can just simply fill the requirement required details as you can see i have entered a parameter that says string hello world and uh, the language to use to translate to the input text and finally when i click on run we can test endpoint you can see this endpoint executed successfully return success we can just check the results or i can see the header and uh, this header we can see this header and here we can find out the api endpoint as well as uh, we can get the API endpoint as well as the API key. And here you can see, here we, here you can see we got the Node.js. So uh, just for testing purpose, what I've done, I just switched to Java async HTTP so that I'll get the proper type. You can see the set here, content type will be this. Accept endpoint will be this and uh, uh, key and the API endpoint. That's when the method will be through. So basically the same 
parameters, same properties I have used in Visual Studio. So let's begin the implementation. And for implementation, what I've done, first of all, I created one translate apex class. And in this translate apex class, I created a function named as language translate. And this function takes three parameters as input, source language, target language, and source test. And we just, we just created two variables, rest, uh, stdb request and stdb response. We set the endpoints, set the method, API keys, I, I paste my API key here. Uh, I'm passing my API key, API host, content type. And I, I just created one string as a body, source test plus. And then I just request to this endpoint and whenever the uh, whenever a request will be uh, whenever a request will be made to the endpoint, that endpoint will uh, validate the request, extract the required details, and revert back with the response. And that response we store into reserve. We can just print it out to validate it. And we, this is what we will be doing: deserialization. So I just deserialize it, and it is going to return the translated text. So this is my Apex class, the controller class. Then I created one lightning web component HTML. And in this component, because we have to create uh, in this component, basically we need to create one drop down for the source language, one drop down for the target language, one button to translate, one text field, input field for the source, and one for the translator for the result. So therefore, these component these uh, components we have to create. And here I created lightning combo box. Division class, uh, sorry, the lightning text area. Lightning, this is the second combo box. And this is the text. Uh, this is the, this will be our button and the text field, text area in order to display the output. Finally, what I will be doing here, I simply add, uh, I just simply set their values and the change handler. And uh, I set the change handler for the combo box for the drop down. For the uh, for the text field and for button, and finally, what I did, I click on translate. This is uh, translate wc dot translate lwc dot js, and this is the uh, this is the js file for our uh, for our Lightning Web component. Here, I included that library. This is the uh, this is the function name, the language translate function, which I have declared in uh, which I have defined in the Apex class. So I just add a reference for that. Then I just declare four variables, the source text, target text, source language, target language, and I set the default values, English and HI stands for Hindi. I just create the options with the values, labels, and their values. So this option, we are going to set these options here with the drop downs, with the combo box, you can see. So options is equal to options. So these options will be declared to this one. So it will display these options, all five options over there. Then Whenever the source language chain handler initiate, it will fetch the selected value from there. And same manner, the target language target language chain handler. So basically, these two chain handlers will be associated with the two combo boxes. Whenever the value change, that it will track the value. It will track the changed value of the selected value. That is the source text handler. And here it is a uh, here is the handle translate function. And this handler, uh, this handle translate function will get initiated when we click on a button. And finally, what I did, I'd simply call this function. I simply call this language translate function. And in this language translate function, I need to pass three parameters. So I'm passing three parameters from here. And whatever is the response returned by this function, because as you can see, this function is going to return a string as an output. So that output we store into result, and this result we set to the target text. And this target text we, we map with this fourth field, which is used to display the target, which is used to display the converted text. There is one more file, the meta.xml. In meta.xml, I just set the target for the Lightning app page, Lightning home page. Let me add the target for the Lightning utility bar as well. Save this. And uh, finally, what we have to do, we have to deploy this. So I am going to deploy this source to the org. And once the deployment will be successful, we will be going to 
place this lightning component lightning web component on a uh, home page or as a application page or as a utility bar so right now i place this lightning component on a home page as you can see and it's working perfectly fine as uh, we have already checked it out i would like to place it in the utility bar how to add this component or how to place this component on a utility bar let me show you that for this i'll just open app i'll just navigate to the setup and look for app manager and uh, i would like to edit the i would like to edit the properties of sales application so app manager and sales app so scroll down sales that's the likely sales and edit utility items and here i'm going to add a utility item and the custom component and the custom component is translate so let it list out display the custom components and translate lwc so i just select the translate lwc and it will place here properties translate lwc and we can label as let's say google translate and save this once it is done i'll get back and we will refresh the application so i will refresh my application here And you can see the Google translated will be placed here. You can open it and test it. So English to, let's say English to French. Hello, how may I, how may I help you? And click on translate. Bonjour, comment, and So the translation will be successful. So that means, our LWC, that means our LWC component has successfully integrated with Google Translate. And uh, from LWC component, it is uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's successfully sent the API request or made the API request to the Google Translation and we are getting the response from there. So that's all in this video. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can share this video. You can post your comments in the comment box. If you have any requirement on training on Salesforce integration, you can reach out to us at the info at aitech1.com or you can contact us on the given numbers. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye, everyone.